Hello, everyone. Realtor Mike Thomas here talking about real estate investing. So you're probably wondering, why is there a picture of the beach in your background instead of a house? Okay, it's really simple. Location, location, location. You've never heard of somebody saying, oh, yeah, real estate is about house, house, house. It's all about location. Uh, and the reason for location is, is the best location has the highest return. They're always going to go up. Um, with real estate, buying the cheapest piece of land may not always be your best option. So I'm going to talk about real estate. What is real estate? Real estate is land. The house that it sits on, the condo, the townhouse, whatever it sits on, it could be a trailer, an RV, that's considered an improvement on the land. So anything you put on the land, you add a swimming pool, you add solar panels to your house, you do any of that stuff, you add a well, you bring in power from the, the power company, you, you have a septic, that's all improvement on the real estate land. So let's talk about land and let's talk about real estate. Let's talk about how you can make money in real estate. I've been doing this for almost 30 years and I've come up with so many ideas I'd like to share with you today. I'm not sure if I'll get to them all, but I will try. If not, I'll make another video. I do have a website called realestateinvesting101.com. Uh, if you care to, check Check me out on the internet, check me out on the web. Um, I'm there, always here to help. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'll try to get to it. Um, so here we go. What makes the most amount of money? I'm always thinking real estate investors are here to make money. Uh, nobody buys a house who's a real estate investor who is in love with the house. They wanna make money. It's their primary purpose. I'm an investor. Investors make money. When an investor comes to my open house and wants to buy it, the first thing that goes through my mind is, wow, he's a real estate investor. I, the offers are going to be low. Um, so how do you make money without going around with lowballing everybody, which is what most of the videos out there are all about, lowballing them, asking the the seller to pay for the closing costs and all of those neat little things. Well, first of all, when you buy an investment property, let me just start off with a primary residence. If you plan to live in it. So I have a friend who just goes around five houses every two years, moves into it, lives in it for a couple of years while he's fixing it up in those, that two year period of time. He will sell the house after two years, wire to avoid capital gains tax, and then he'll buy another house. A fixer upper, he'll move into it, he'll put a lot of money into it, fixing it up over time, over two years, um, and then he'll turn around and sell it, and he'll do this again and again and again every two years. This is a great way of making money. Um, it's also very time consuming, and some real estate investors don't have that much time. They want to make money quicker than every two years. However, it is a great profit because if you move every two years and you don't have to pay capital gains tax because it's your primary residence and it's homesteaded, it has to have two things. It has to be your, be your primary residence, has to be homesteaded. So those are the two requirements that um, are necessary here in the state of Florida to have um, no capital gains tax. And then there's a limit if you're a single person, it's up to $250,000 of profit which basically means this. Let's say you buy a house for, I'm gonna say a million dollars, okay? And you put in $250,000. So now you're in it at a million 250. And you sell it for a million five. That means that you've only made a $250,000 profit. There is a way to allow other people to have capital gains as well. So, and I haven't really checked this one out yet, so I probably need to make a follow-up video on this. But a lady was telling me that she bought a piece of property and she added her adult son to it. And now they have a, a, a 
$500,000 capital gain. So if they make more than $500,000 together, they have to pay taxes on the, on the overage of the $500,000. Um, so if you're a married couple, you have a $500,000 deduction. That would be me if I add my wife to it. If I buy a property as an investor by myself, then it's only $250,000 deductible. And I have to move into the property, live in the property and homestead the property. So of course, I'm going to do that with my wife and uh, my two children. And that's the way that that works. However, there is another opportunity that I think you're going to like. This is one of my personal favorites. And this requires a little bit more knowledge, but you don't have to be an expert because you leave that to the experts. Um, I always tell people this, listen, don't try to figure out everything that I know. I have 30 years of collective knowledge that I have, strategies I use, uh, thought process, everything for me is different. There's no two real estate deals that are the same. So why not find somebody like me and ask me questions and I'll give you those answers. It's as easy as going to Google and getting your answers from Google, except you're getting it from a live person, uh, live expert. And a buyer's agent really doesn't cost you anything at all. Um, the commissions are normally paid by the seller here in the state of Florida anyway. I don't know how it is in other parts of the country. You may live in an area where it's not that, but um, here in Florida, real estate um, commissions are paid by the seller and the seller's agent and the buyer's agent split the commission if I were to bring in a buyer. So there's really no cost to you, no risk to you. You get all the benefits as a buyer um, without having to pay uh, anything at all to the real estate agent for a commission. So with that said, how do I do it? How does it work? How do you make money in real estate? How do you make the millions? Um, builders, I, I work for the largest home builder in the United States uh, as a top level executive. And with that being said, there's a lot of money to be made in building but you're going to tell me, Mike, I don't want to build. It's too much headache. I got to deal with contractors. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do the other thing. I need so much money. The answer is no, you don't. In fact, you shouldn't deal with the contractors. That's not your job. And I'm going to walk you through it. And it'll be the most enlightening thing that you're probably going to learn in real estate. Okay. So, you get a good realtor and you find a piece of land with a great, what? Location. You find a great location and it probably won't be the cheapest piece of land you're going to find. But why? Because if it doesn't have a great location, it doesn't matter. You might as well not even put a foundation on the house. Okay? So find something that has a great location. And if you have to, you're going to pay a little bit of a premium, but you're not going to pay a, an absorbent premium. Okay. So sorry about that. Did not know that that was on. Um, anyway, you got a piece of land. Now what do you do? Well, you simply hire a general contractor. Now there's things out there that are shell contractors that just build the roof, the walls, uh, and everything, but you're going to be doing most of the work on the inside of the house. They'll put in windows, they'll put in doors, they'll build you a shell, but they won't finish it off. Uh, but it has to be finished off for you to get your CO, which is called a certificate of occupancy, and you're going to need that to close on the house. So you can either A, have the builder finish it all off, which I recommend because if you're not experienced in doing that, you need to do that once or twice and watch how it's done. If you want to hire your own contractors, but the builder has an advantage over you, the GC, the general contractor has an advantage over you, and he'll be handling all of the supervising of the, of the contractors. So you don't have to. So 
you don't have to pull permits. You're not doing an owner build here. You're not trying to maximize your profit. You're simply are buying a piece of land, having a general contractor build you a house on it. Okay. Now, how do you do that? How do you hire a general contractor? It's simple. Shop. Call two, three, four, five general contractors. Uh, have a floor plan or, or some blueprints from an architect that you say, hey, uh, how much will you cost? How much will you charge me to build this house? They'll tell you. Most of the time, you can find a good floor plan that the GC already has. So you don't have to go to an architect to do all of that. You just simply go to a general contractor and say, hey, do you have any blueprints of any houses that you've built that were between 2,000 and, and two, 2,500 square feet, uh, one level or two stories or whatever it is that you're looking for, four bedrooms, five bedrooms, whatever it may be. And they'll have something uh, that they've built before. And they'll say, this is a great floor plan. This is a floor plan that sells very well. So you have to calculate how much are you paying for the land and how much does it cost to build it? Now, I know what you're thinking. I know exactly what you're thinking. You're going to say, well, Mike, how much is this going to cost me? I don't have that kind of money. All right. So I was talking to a lender and the lender was telling me, hey, uh, if you find a piece of land and you want to build a house on it, the bank will lend you up to 80% of the value of the house after it's been built. Let me repeat this again. 80% loan to value after the home has been built, the appraised value. What does that mean? Okay. I'm going to give you, for instance, this is a real life scenario. I had it. Um, it's going to buy a piece of land, $200,000. Okay, $200,000 for the land. Great location. So I was thinking I want to do, um, let's say, 2,500 square foot. It was going to cost me 200 a square foot. So that's um, $500,000. And with the $200,000 that it was... Um, um, of the land, I'm in it for $700,000. So $700,000, but after the home was built, it was worth a million dollars. So that's actually 70% loan to value. I could have spent another $100,000 maybe putting in a pool, doing something else. Um, so how much am I really paying? I'm going to get 100% financing on that because I'm still not at 80% loan to value. Let's say that there's a margin of error and I'm building this house and it's costing me a little bit more than I need to. That's the you know, difference. I'm still not going to be up to that 80% because I would have to reach $800,000 before there's any money out of my pocket. Isn't that a cool idea, huh? Buy a piece of land for $200,000, put a $500,000 house on it in an area where that house will sell for a million dollars after it's been built. So what do you have to come up with? Nothing really. Maybe some closing costs? Hmm, sure. There's going to be some closing costs on the land, but you're not doing any closing costs on the building. So what are we talking about a $200,000 piece of land? Uh, pretty much easy, low closing costs for, um, you know, the actual thing. Are there some monthly payments? Yeah, you know, the, the lender is going to do what they call a construction loan. So instead of giving you all the money, they're going to be paying out the general contractor as time goes by on what they call draws. So the general contractor may get like maybe four draws that he gets during the time of build. And let's say it takes a year to build. So every three months he's going to get a draw and he's going to take that money and pay the contractors. And that's how that works. So my suggestion to you is find a reputable general contractor 
someone who's been in the business for a while, not somebody who just got in the business, will, you know, take your money and run kind of guy. Do your research. Find a general contractor. Find somebody who has homes that were built that you liked. Um, find a lender. Uh, get in touch with the lender and say, hey, do you have any loans? If I buy a piece of land and put a house on it, what, um, what's the loan to value on that? Uh, start asking questions in your area, in your neighborhood. Build relationships with you know, a couple of good lenders. But don't bounce around with lenders. Just find a couple that you like and keep using those lenders. And the reason for that is loyalty breeds loyalty. The same thing with real estate agents. Find a good real estate agent that you like, who's knowledgeable, who's been in the business for a while, uh, who's got some experience and expertise in areas, and use that agent. Uh, make that your personal agent. And you're going to build a relationship with them and you're going to build loyalty and you're going to have a great relationship. Find a few builders that you like, you know, play the bill, play the builders or the general contractors against each other and say, listen, you know, um, GC one told me this price, you know, will you be able to do it for that? Um, and find out why are you comparing apples to apples or apples to oranges you know, what exactly are you looking for? And it's going to come over time. And maybe you won't make a lot of money um, in the first couple of times that you do it. But I guarantee you, if you can make $300,000 on building a house that you have nothing to do with. In fact, I don't want you to bother the general contractor because that would just slow them down. I mean, check in on it and ask questions to the general contractor. Hey, what's going on with the house? You know, it's taking a lot of time. Most of the time is going to be the permitting. And the builder that I work for did it really smart. They used to do all the permitting in advance. So the permits were already in place uh, by the time somebody wanted the, the, the house. And then they would just build a house. Building the house is going to be quick and easy. It's the permit process that takes a long time. So have the general contractor tell you all about permitting in your area. It's different from county to county and city to city and different things. Make sure that that builder has built in your area, that he knows the building process in the city or town or county that you're looking to, to build. And you can make a lot of money this way. Um, if you can make a $200,000 profit in one year, that's great. That is more than what most people make uh, as an annual salary. So that may be a good idea to buy a property with very little money out of your pocket. Um, maybe you can even have a creative realtor who can, you know, juggle some things around, but there is going to be that construction time of them giving you the money from the time that you buy the land until the home is built. And you need to have all your ducks in a row. You need to say, I'm going to buy this property. I'm going to put this house on it. It's going to take this much time. The building to get the permit is going to take this long. And hopefully there won't be any quirks in supplies as we had with COVID. COVID really put a supply damper on a lot of the builders where they weren't able to get some of the materials or even some of the contractors to do the work. So hopefully that won't happen again and we'll be in the clear from here on out. I'm sure that uh, everybody has gotten either vaccinated or has built antibodies against uh, COVID. And I, I wish you all well and safe and look forward to doing another video. I'm going to be doing videos every single day to the end of the year. So please stick with me. And this is where I always beg for subscribers. Please, 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 please subscribe to my channel. Uh, give us a like if you like us. Share the love. Uh, leave a comment. I always love comments. Um, and share this video. If you think that someone else can benefit from it, share this video. Let people know about it. Spread the good word. Thank you so much. Until next time, I'm real estate agent Mike Thomas.